Okay, chapter 16 is the autonomic nervous system and higher order functions, which we didn't talk about yet. Autonomic nervous system. So learning outcomes, we'll talk about the autonomic nervous system, sympathetic and parasympathetic, starting from sensory, both sensory and motor, starting from the receptors and ending at the effector. We will control the physiology or the functions, both of them. Sympathetic and parasympathetic. And then we will uh, go through the conscious functions, which is the highest functions of uh, the body. So autonomic nervous system, which is the visceral system. We talked about somatic. We covered everything in a somatic, right? Somatic sensory and somatic motor. What's the somatic? Anything that's voluntary, right? So now the viscera autonomic nervous system so we're talking about sympathetic and parasympathetic plus high functions consciousness learning and intelligence so one more time somatic nervous system is the voluntary the voluntary nervous system the voluntary one sensation from skin and muscles and motor command to the voluntary muscles together somatic anything related to the viscera is visceral or autonomic, okay? And this is the involuntary one, including what? I don't have to mention it. Do you know what's involuntary in your body? I think we all know, right? You know what's involuntary. But you need to know that the hypothalamus is the head of the autonomic nervous system or the visceral nervous system. This is the integrative center for those, uh, for all of these uh, involuntary system or, or uh, the visceral. So we're talking about the visceral motor now. What do you mean the visceral motor? Like from the nervous system to the organs, telling them what to do. The opposite is sensory, isn't it? Sensation from your viscera to the central nervous system, this is sensory. Motor command from your central nervous system to the organs, this is motor, right? Which is efferent. We're talking about efferent now. Efferent, there is not, again, there is not one nerve that go from your brain all the way to your heart. This is too much. We don't have a nerve that's long like this, okay? So, practically speaking, what's happening here is the central nervous system, brain, Near the brain stem and the spinal cord. This is the central nervous system, right? And let's say here is your heart. Okay? There is nothing that goes like this. No. There is one that goes out and stops. And then another one will take it from there and go to the organ. This, when you stop, is called the ganglia. Uh, is that different than the ganglia that we talked about, the, the, the dorsal root ganglia for sensation? Yes, it's completely different. The dorsal root ganglia is where the body is located, right? This one is when you go from the central nervous system and stop, and there's another one that take it from there and go all the way to the organ. Like I'm going to talk you to Japan, I go from here to, to London or from London to Japan. London is a ganglia, okay? Where you stop and then continue. So we will call this the ganglion, and because of that, before the ganglion, which is from the central nervous system to the ganglion, we call that the pre-ganglionic. And the other part is post-ganglionic, okay? Pre and post-ganglionic. And this one, I want you to differentiate between the sympathetic and nerv nervous system and parasympathetic in the following, which is very important. Where is the ganglia? And according to that, you can tell if the, if the pre-ganglionic is longer or the post-ganglionic, okay? Like this. Uh, I can go from here, from Michigan to New York, and from New York to Japan. From here to New York is a lot shorter than from New York to Japan, isn't it? Versus, I can go from here to Korea, 
and from creator to friend, from here to creator to all this, right? So depending on where you start, where is your start to sleep? Where is it? And this will determine which one is longer. So let me tell you this, for the sympathetic nervous system, the ganglia are very close to the central nervous system. So what do you think? The preganglionic is short or long? Short. It, it's the ganglia around the central nervous system. So you go this short distance to the ganglia, and look at this, from the ganglia all the way to the organ. So which one is longer in the sympathetic? Pre or post ganglionic? Post is longer, and pre is short. Why? Because the ganglia is right beside the central nervous system. Just move out and you'll find it. It's short. And the, po the post ganglionic is long. The opposite is the parasympathetic. And here's what I mean. This is the heart, right? What is the parasympathetic ganglia? Beside the organ or inside the wall of the organ? So what do you think? It's like this. Let's say from here. You go like this. If this is longer or this? Preganglionic is? And the post is? Yes. Because the parasympathetic ganglia is located right beside the organ or within the wall of the organ. Is that clear? So you, uh, you are going from the central nervous system all the way to the ganglia that's beside the organ or inside the wall. And then from there, it just enters to the organ. Very short, right? So this is the first thing that you have to know. Preganglionic, postganglionic, long, short, depending on sympathetic or parasympathetic. Um, so if you, if you look at this one here, this is the upper motor, the red and the lower motor, the upper motor come from, from the cortex anyway. And what is this? What are we starting exactly? Can anybody tell me what is this? Precentral gyrus. Do you see the stars? The stars are in the precentral gyrus. Don't forget this primary motor area. How about the postcentral gyrus? What do we call it? Primary what? What do you call the postcentral gyrus? Primary? It's a gyrus, but what do we call it? Primary sensory area. Premotor, uh, pre-central gyrus, primary motor. Postcentral gyrus, primary sensory. Don't forget this. Primary motor starts from the pre the precentral gyrus. The, the sensation, the primary sensations, post central gyrus. It should be clear, right? Where is the visual sensations go to? Which part of the cortex? Occipital lobe, isn't it? How about the uh, hearing? To the temporal lobe. Do you guys remember this? You will be asked about it. You should know. So this is the um, uh, upper motor and lower motor neurons. Upper motor always start from the cortex, specifically pre-central gyrus, which is also known as primary motor area. This is the red. And where is it going to end? Either in the brain stem or in the spinal cord. This is the upper motor. Lower motor will take it from there, which is the black, to the muscles. How about the ganglia? Look at this. The lower motor, you go from there and you go to the ganglion. And from the ganglion, you go to the organ. So the red is before the ganglion, and this is called preganglionic. The black is after the ganglion, it's postganglionic. Sympathetic and parasympathetic. Uh, I think I talked about this before, but let me repeat and to make it easy. And if you see a couple of questions, you should easily answer these questions. The, 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 the only thing that I wanted to say here is, what do you think, to think about it? And I'm going to ask you guys, even without going through it, I'm gonna ask you in the form of questions. What do you think you are in the middle of the fight? And tell me the following. Your heart rate, increase or decrease in the middle of the fight? Increase, of course. What do you think about your blood pressure? Increase, respiratory rate. Increase, of course, right? Do you sweat or not during the fight? 
Yes, you sweat more. Do you dilate your bronchi to breathe more or constrict? Dilate, you need more air during the fight, right? Do you dilate your pupil or constrict them? You are in the middle of the fight. If you constrict, you can't see, right? You dilate to be able to see more, right? Do you increase your metabolism and get more energy or decrease your metabolism get and get less energy during the fight? Increase metabolism and get more energy. Does it make sense or not? It should make sense. You don't even have to like memorize it. It's all understanding. What happened to me during the fight, you name it, you will get it. Okay? How about this? Should I send more blood to my muscles and to my brain or should I send it more to my digestive system, urinary system, reproductive system during the fight? Which is more important at this point? The muscles and brain. Make sense? Right? Dilate, dilate to send more blood to my muscles and to my brain. This is more important at this time. Uh, not, it's not my, 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 my primary concern. It's not really the digestive system, the urinary system, the productive system. This is not my, my uh, primary concern during the fight. You're during the fight, right? Okay, one more thing. Should I increase or decrease the activities or the, of the digestive system, urinary system, reproductive system during the fight? Decrease it. Is it a good time to activate your uh, motor function of the digestive system, the movements? Is it wise to increase the secretions at this point? This is not a good time. You can do that if you're resting, right? Why should I do it in the middle of the fight? You know what's going to happen? If that's the case, if you activate your digestive system during the fight, you need to go to the bathroom, right? If you activate your urinary system, you need to go to the fight. You're in the middle of the fight. Can you, like, give me a second. I'm going to go run real quick. Bathroom, I'll be right back. No, right? It doesn't make sense. No, I suppress these organs. What do you mean suppress? Both motility and secretions. Motility and secretions. Of what? Of all these systems. Digestive system, decrease, decrease, decrease. The systems that are not helpful, not my primary concern during the fight, I will suppress it. Suppress it in two ways, motility and secretion, both of them, right? So that gets us to, this, to, to the saliva. Do you produce more saliva or less saliva? Less saliva, your mouth will be dry or wet? Dry, right? Because you secrete less. Did you get the sympathetic nervous system? I think it's easy. The opposite is the parasympathetic. That's it. Everything that we said right now, just reverse it. And it, the, 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 the first one, sympathetic, is uh, fight or flight. I will either fight or run, right? Both of those, sympathetic. You're anxious, right? So you turn on everything that will help you at this situation. Just the opposite, which is the parasympathetic, rest, digest. Yes. This, this is the opposite. This is where I'm going to activate my digestive system, urinary system, reproductive system. Activate them how? Motility and secretion. Yes, that's a good time, right? It's rest and digest. Uh, where should I send the blood? To the digestive system and, and urinary system, right? Not to the muscles and the brain. What are you doing? I'm resting and digesting. Why do you need the blood to be diverted to these organs? You're not fighting, right? Does it make sense? Everything else is the same thing. Do I dilate or constrict my pupil? Constrict. Do I dilate or constrict my bronchi? Constrict. Accelerate the heart, speed it up or slow it down? Of course, slow it down, right? It's exactly the opposite of uh, the sympathetic nervous system. Fight, flight, or rest, digest. And here it is. You will be mentally alert, increasing metabolic rate to get more energy, uh, reduce digestive and urinary function, activate energy, respiratory rate, dilate the, 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 the bronchi and the respiratory passageway, increase heart rate, blood pressure. It's exactly what we mentioned. These seven are exactly what we, we mentioned during uh, fight or flight, and exactly the opposite is the parasympathetic. Now, where do we start the sympathetic nervous system? And this can be a question very important. It's basic.
So these are the two ganglia. Both of them are close to the spinal cord. So preganglionic is short, postganglionic is long. Is that clear so far? Okay. So this is for the sympathetic chain and for the collateral. Where is the collateral? Collateral is prevertebral. Collateral is in front of the vertebral column, in front of the of the spinal cord. Okay? In front of uh, the vertebra. And it's one. Collateral is one. One in front of it. How about the spinal, uh, the sympathetic chain? It's one on the right, one on the left. I know you saw one on the right, but there is one in the left. The last one is an exception. Just to give you an idea, the third type, this is unique. It doesn't follow the rules. Everything follows the rules. The ganglia are close to the central nervous system. The preganglionic is short and the postganglionic is long. Yes. This is generally speaking. But there is one exception. One of these ganglia, when you were a fetus, it moved all the way, become bigger, modified, and settle above the kidney. And we call this modified ganglia 
suprarenal gland, the suprarenal medulla specifically, the core inside. So what's a suprarenal gland? It is one of those ganglia that we just talked about, but it's modified, it's like moving like this. We're, we're not studying embryology, I'm just giving you a background. Just moved and become bigger, and at, and, and at the end it settled above the, uh, the, the kidney, so obviously we call it suprarenal or adrenal. Do you remember supra and ad above? So this is where it's located, above the kidneys. So what does that mean? It means that the preganglionic in this one only, just exception, this one only, the preganglionic is long until it go to this, all the way to the kidney. How about the postganglionic? No postganglionic. Instead, it secretes hormones, adrenaline and noradrenaline. This is exception, this is unique. I hope it's clear. Is that clear? This is an exception, suprarenal medulla. So here is the synthetic chain, and it's on either side and controlling like this whole thing, the body wall, the thoracic cavity, head, neck, limbs. And uh, do you guys remember this? Do you remember where the, 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 the three horns, posterior horn, anterior horn, and lateral horn? Posterior horn is where the bodies of the sensory located. Anterior horn is for motor, and lateral is for the autonomic. Here it is. It's located in the lateral here. You see this red? So how does it leave the central nervous system? I'm talking about autonomic now, not somatic. Yes, it will jump or it will, or it will exit even though it starts from the lateral. But look at the red, it starts from the lateral. And it will follow the anterior roots. And then it will follow to the spinal cord that sets. It's not going to continue with the rest of the nerve. You, do you remember what are the like roots, spinal nerve, and then give you the rami? Do you remember this? Anterior and posterior rami? It will follow the anterior roots, spinal nerve, that's it. It doesn't go to the, to the branches, to the rami. Instead, it's going to exit and go to the ganglia. This exit, when it exit and go to the ganglia, and part of it will come back, we call that the white and gray rami. Look at this. Follow with me. This is anterior. This is anterior root, isn't it? Anterior root. And look at this. This is the spinal cord, uh, the spinal nerve it itself, right? Uh, do you go all the way until you branch, Remi? No. Look at this. You're going to leave. Exit. Go to the ganglion, the sympathetic chain ganglion. Continue. But part of it is going to go back. Do you see this? You see two? One is from the nerve to the ganglion, and the other one is from the ganglion to the nerve. Can you see these two? This one here, which is from the nerve to the ganglion, is called white ramus. And the other one that you turn back from the ganglion and come back to the nerve, this is called gray. How to remember this? Give us a trick to remember. Yes, if I'm wearing like a white shirt and go to the room, clean it, by the time I come back, it's not white anymore. It's dusty, it's gray, right? So if you're going to the ganglia to do the work, white. By the time you finish the work and come back, you're gray. Just a little bit thing to remind you with here is a white and here is a gray. Do you see the red? And then the, the, uh, the, 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 the black is the one that's returning. Collateral ganglia is called also prevertebral because it's in front of the vertebral bodies. And this, this one is specified in abdominal pelvic tissues. Unlike the synthetic chain ganglion that are responsible for everything else. This one is abdominal pelvic organs. And here is location. Look at this. Look at the sympathetic chain. You see one on the right and one on the left, right? You see this one here, collateral? It's in the front. Adrenal medulla, nothing much to know. I told you what you need to know. Preganglionic, going to the ganglion, and then it's, it continues to, uh, to the adrenal uh, medulla. So it goes like this. Until it goes to the adrenal. Uh, do you mean the adrenal gland? No, not, not the gland. The gland is core inside and a cortex outside. 
Do you understand what, I, what I'm saying? The gland, each gland, every single gland, one of these glands that secretes secretions, the inside is called the core. We call it the medulla, the medulla of this organ. And the cover is called cortex. Are you referring to all of this? No. I'm just referring to the core inside, which is called the suprarenal medulla specifically. Cortex is not our issue for now. This is AP2. You will learn about the cortex. It does a completely different function. But this one, the, the, the core or the medulla, is the one that's going to give us uh, uh, the adrenaline and noradrenaline. Okay, so obviously preganglionic is short, postganglionic is long, and here it is. Start from uh, sympathetic from uh, not not this. The origin is thoracolumbar, but the chain are on on beside the whole inside uh, the whole uh, spinal cord. Three of them in the cervical region. Let's say twelve five five one. Isn't that the same as the segments? 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar, 5 sacral, and 1 coccygeal. Do you remember these nerves? It's exactly the same, but you only have 3 cervical instead of 8. That's it. This is for the ganglion. So you start from T1 until L2, and you see the white rami and gray rami. It goes without saying that the white rami, is, is that myelinated or unmyelinated? White rami, white. Myelinated, unmyelinated, what do you think? The, my, the myelin is white in color. The myelinated is like you're wearing a white shirt. What's a natural color without the cover? Gray. So what do you think? Gray is unmyelinated and white is myelinated. So this is just something additional to do is um, uh, rami. So just myelinated and unmyelinated. Do I need to know more than that? No, you don't need to. Uh, the sympathetic pass leaving now. Do you remember five, six, nine, and yes, five, seven, nine, and ten? Do you remember these for sensory? Yes. The opposite. You're not still not going in the space. No, you're going to use three, seven, nine, and ten. So what's the difference? If you're going in, use four buses. Five, seven, nine, and ten. If you're going out. Use four buses. Same, but three instead of five. That's it. Like this. And this is the last thing that I'm talking about today. Uh, if you're going, this is, this is the central nervous system. Okay? Like this. Right? If you're going through for the dynamic, five, seven, nine, ten. If you're going out, three, very similar? Yes, but five, three. Just to comparison always makes it easier. Okay? And you have to remember this. It doesn't like go in the space to reach the organ. No. You have to join something. You're taking a bus. And here it is. So I'm going to stop here.